In the long list of newly discovered crocodilian species, the barking crocodile of Borneo is perhaps the strangest, least acknowledged, and possibly the first crocodile species to recently become extinct in the wild. But is this a legitimate species? Originally described in 1844, the species was given the name Crocodilus bipercatus reninus and was described as a subspecies of the saltwater crocodile, now known as Crocodilus porosus. The two main characteristics that differentiated Reninus from other salties was the snout shape and arrangement of scales. Two specimens at the time were used to determine this. One was a juvenile found by a French naturalist, and the other being an adult skull. As time went on, the validity of this claim was pushed under the rug, as other experts thought the skull belonged to a regular saltwater crocodile, and that the juvenile was either a mugger crocodile, Crocodilus palustris, or an animal similar to the Siamese crocodile, Crocodilus siamensis. Even when the species was mentioned in later literature, it was often regarded as another name for the saltwater crocodile. However, in 1990, Charles A. Ross came out with a paper arguing the validity of Reninus as its own separate species. When evaluating 481 specimens, he found three that could be designated as this Borneo crocodile. The first was a roughly two-foot skull from Borneo located in the American Natural History Museum. The other two were preserved juveniles in museums, one found in America and the other in India. For the skull, it was said to have differed from the saltwater crocodile based on these three characteristics. As for the two juveniles, they both had four well-developed postoccipital scutes, which differ from most other salties, along with a reduced number of transverse ventral scale rows compared to salties. Ross argued that the three specimens could not be mugger or Siamese crocodiles either. However, he did state that the specimens most closely resembled the New Guinea crocodile, Philippine crocodile, and Johnson's crocodile. Still, Ross argued that the specimens differed from these species for several reasons, and stated, I conclude that the palustrine crocodile of Borneo is distinct at the species level, and that the name Crocodilus reninus should be resurrected for this poorly known population of Indo-Pacific crocodile. In 1993, three experts wrote of a captive specimen that they believed could have been this Borneo crocodile. They believed it differed from salties due to the individual having a darker coloration, a broader and blunter snout, sharply keeled dorsal scutes, a rougher appearance, and prominent postoccipital scutes. In 1998, a publication was released which included photos and details of the species' whereabouts in the wild. In the publication, a male and female identified as Reninus were found in a crocodile farm, with the larger male being a bit under 6 feet in length. The assertion of these two individuals being Reninus were based on the animal's ventral scalation. Photos were taken of these crocodiles along with a tissue sample of the male. In terms of the species being in the wild, some information was found. The captive individual's caretaker, Mr. Kassan, repeatedly stated these animals were caught from the wild in the 1990s. In addition, a retired crocodile hunter referred to Reninus as Bawaya Salak, or literally barking crocodile. It was stated that while the species was once found in the area, it may be locally extinct. No wild specimens suspected to be Reninus were found in the wild for the study. Although another paper from the early 2000s described another skull which fit the category of Reninus, no other major updates have since been found which validate this Borneo crocodile. More individuals in captive facilities have been reported little by little, but even this is indefinite. Considering the nature of these reports, if the Borneo crocodile is a valid species, it could be the first modern species of crocodilian to be at least extinct in the wild. However, how really valid is this species? The first issue right off the bat for many experts is that we're dealing with a very limited sample size, and what we do have is similar to some other living species of crocs. The other issue is that the genetic evidence doesn't validate this as a real species. Another paper from the early 2000s by Jacob Graden used genetic material from a captive Reninus and concluded, Crocodilus Reninus does not appear to be a valid taxon. This is not the first time there have been conflicted conclusions between genetic and physical characteristics for crocodilians. One example of this concerns the Rio Apoporus caiman. It has a uniquely slender snout for a caiman and based on morphological evidence, seems to at least be its own subspecies of the speckled caiman. However, based on genetic evidence, it actually appeared to be the same as another subspecies, Cayman crocodilus crocodilus. Getting back to Reninus, Grattan's paper did say one interesting thing which is important. He stated that Reninus appears to be conspecific with northern form Crocodilus novaginiae. To get more into detail about these northern crocs, the New Guinea crocodile was long suspected of actually being two separate species, with there being northern and southern species. 
This split was again further supported in a 2019 paper with the new species Crocodilus hallite, or Hall's New Guinea crocodile, being described. This split was largely based on skulls, and this 2019 paper also mentioned Rhinus. It again brought up Ross's point of Rhinus being similar to the northern New Guinea crocs based on its skull. Based on everything I stated, these Borneo crocs could be, at most, a subspecies of these New Guinea crocs. In addition to this, I must bring up one major point concerning the scalation of these Borneo crocodiles. One of the major points which separated the Borneo crocodile from the Sawar crocodile was the presence of four prominent postoccipital scutes, which saltwater crocodiles lack. While many saltwater crocodiles throughout their range lack these scutes, there are some populations that have them. These salties in Bitarkanika National Park in India, for example, have prominent postoccipital scutes. Considering the vast range of the saltwater crocodile from Southeast Asia to Northern Australia, it is not unexpected to see slight variation throughout the species range. Therefore, it adds more to the point of Rhinus possibly being a subspecies at the absolute most. Considering all the points I've made, Rhinus has been kind of pushed under the rug by many within the crocodilian world. However, it's not completely out of the picture. Some still regard it as a valid species, with one paper in 2020 about Dinosuchus even including it in a tree with other crocodilians. The IUCN Crocodile Specialist Group, which is a leading worldwide authority for crocodilians, also stated in 2024 that Efforts are underway to collect DNA from museum specimens of Crocodilus rhinus, but are, as yet, unpublished. The CSG Taxonomy and Identification Group refrains from making a determination as to the validity of Crocodilus rhinus at this time. Only time will tell if this black sheep of the crocodile world is an actual species. So many of you know about the current study I am working on about 20 foot plus crocodilians. Heck, the topic is pretty much the main thing I'm known for on here, but I need your help. I am finding some really interesting information pertaining to certain head measurements for at least a saltwater crocodile. However, I am currently working with a small sample size. What I am looking for are detailed measurements from skulls or heads of saltwater crocodiles that came from animals at least 10 feet or 3 meters long. I will have my email and Instagram in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you all for watching. To learn more about the animals you just saw, by the second edition of What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, regenerating tails, alligators in the sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book examines claims many, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and the second edition includes updated information, pictures, and more. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians, the second edition, in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.